Hello, my name is Angela Prinsel, and today I would like to talk to you about separation agreements. Now, I know for some people that are having uh, issues in their relationship and have decided that, you know, they would like to separate, you may be thinking that a separation agreement may be the best way to go rather than having to go to a court to have your issue determined. And you will be correct. Separation agreements are definitely more time efficient. It's more cost effective. And um, certainly you can, you have the flexibility to arrange your affairs as you see fit. The challenge is what um, the court sometimes refer to as kitchen table agreement. And this is generally where, you know, both spouses sit down together and, and draft a separation agreement. Now, I understand that cost generally is a concern, but the cost of having these agreements done yourself is way more than you might imagine. Um, you probably, if you're going through a separation, you want certainty, you want finality, but most especially, you also want things to be fair. And these are some of the factors that don't always reflect in kitchen table separation agreements. So the first thing from this video that I want you to take away is the cost to get a separation agreement changed later or the cost to you if an agreement that you thought was final gets changed is way more than what it would cost you to have lawyers do it for you right from the outset. Now, what are some of the most common mistakes that we find people make? Well, first off, with regard to property. So the main pensions is a big is a big one. Sometimes people don't understand that pension is property. They don't understand the way it's being valued and how you know the asset is to be allocated and how it's to be split. So when years down the road one of the parties recognizes this, then you have a long costly court battle to deal with it. Now you have to recognize that it's even in the discretion of the courts to decide whether or not they're going to um, review your your agreement and you know make any changes or if you're going to have to leave with an agreement that doesn't really reflect what you wanted. Um, insurance is another um, subject that's not properly dealt with in some separation agreements. And another trend that we're noticing is with regard to spousal support. And sometimes you would find people say, well, I don't want support, which is fine for the day. And if that's really your, your desire, then it needs to be entered properly into an agreement that would withstand, um, you know, challenge in the future. If you're the person who is supposed to pay support, you want to make sure that the party cannot come back later and ask you for support, you know, which is different from what you agreed on. The same applies for, you know, if you're the support recipient and the agreement, you know, you come together with your spouse, ex-spouse, and you decide that you want to fix the amount of support. Well, how are you sure exactly what you're entitled to? There might be some free software that could help you do that, but those are just guides. They do not take into um, factor the objectives of either the Divorce Act or the Family Law Act, and then these things are matters that are somewhat sophisticated but can be very easily simplified by uh, the family law lawyer. So if you are going through a separation, it's highly recommended that you speak to a lawyer, that you make sure that your assets are dealt with properly, and that all the issues, including support, both child and spousal, are dealt with properly, and that most especially your agreement is final and what it's what is contained in that agreement actually reflects what you need. So give us a call if you um, are going through a separation and thinking about drafting a separation agreement. We will be able to help you with the matter and it takes very short time, it's very cost effective and it will save you a whole lot of headache in the future. Take care.